Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Challenge All Stars for Rehab Up podcast for the premiere. I am Brian Cohn. With me, as always, is my co host, Al Asher. Ali, how are you? I don't like it. <laughs> Here Hello. we are. Hello. Oh. Already. <laughs> no, I am. Um, I am. Uh, Feeling weird about being on video with you, Brian, uh, but it is all made up for in the fact that I am so beyond hype for this season of All Stars 4. Yeah, I didn't really realize we were going to have two episodes to talk about. So we got double dose of a premiere, episode one and episode two, a full host of what the season is, a full host of everyone's cast nickname. We got a really in-depth story on almost everyone. So this is really hitting the ground running for All Stars 4. Pa- Pierre Mar Poss is where it's at. I am so hype for just like every every minute. I wouldn't change a second. <laughs> I wouldn't change a thing about the first two episodes. Um, but before we really get into it, should we like give a little teaser for like anybody who is like clicking um, ill-advisedly on the YouTube or like still just a regular challenge listener and happens to listen to the first like few seconds of this on like why you should stay with us? on P plus for the challenge all stars for why you stay with us. That feels like a very like introspective question. Why do you stay with us? I mean, all stars four is where, or all stars in general, I guess is where like the challenge hardcore fan lives. I would say this is not like the CBS version, the mom and pop, like, you know, survivor version. This is not the long standing up to season 40 MTV version. This is, where I think they try some new things. You, obviously, they're bringing back a lot of old people from all the way back to like season one. So if you want some nostalgia, it's there. You have some recent nostalgia. It's really kind of like a a culmination of like all the challenges put together, and it's like a really fun universe. I feel like this is where we're able to kind of like let our hair down and breathe and have a little fun with the the core audience of the challenge. So come on down to the core audience world. Yeah, don't get used to my hair being down on these videos um, one time only. No, uh, I mean, I think, like, because it's been a little while since All-Stars 3 and we've been waiting, you know, All-Stars 4 has been in the can for a while. There's been a lot of, like, talk about how the seasons, like, bleed into each other, the different franchises, what's really, you know, the challenge proper, as you once said to TJ, what's our show and what's Mm -hmm. CBS and what's All-Stars, and they bring, you know, folks across different the different um, shows, but, you know, I've always been saying there's like a reason for the division and I've been like losing that argument to like the internet and to, and to you and, and other people who really know what they're talking about as opposed to me, but the energy, I'm sorry, the energy of all stars Four. I don't care if I've seen some of these people recently, as recently as this last season in battle for Mm -hmm. a new champion as the champions, the energy in the room is different. The vibes are different. TJ is different. It is so throwback. It is so fun. The vibes in the house are different. What's talked about is different. It is just such a like return to form to the glory days. It, it's I'm already two episodes in and I'm sad it's going to be over at some point. <laughs> One of the biggest things All Stars always does that at least maybe in in kind of the rough stretch of the 30s, the challenge proper didn't do, was they put them in a beautiful house, beautiful weather. They can have fun pool parties, an amazing water slide. Like, who doesn't want to go to this house and, like, rent it out for a weekend as opposed to being in, like, the dungeon of, like, season 37? Like, this, they make All-Stars a much more visually appealing show without all the bells and whistles of the explosions and the dynamite and stuff. So All-Stars, is just it's just a, a pleasant watch, I would say. And I, that's what these first two episodes were. There's just a pleasant watch. Okay, uh, classic challenger hop up pop quiz. Where is the challenge All Stars Four located? Mentioned several times in the first two oh. episodes. Can I get can I get a hint? We'll we, discuss oh. it later. Can you do you remember the produce <laughs> they're known for? Because TJ gave us fun facts about the location. Oh, I don't know Brazil. I don't know where are they. Mm, not even close. Not even on the right even continent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Let's go back, though, and we didn't do a preview, so let's talk quickly, or not quickly, uh, if I have anything to do with it, um, about the cast that is back. I I just want to shout out first that I'm obsessed with, like, the intro origin history we got Mm -hmm. in voiceover from TJ with clips. Like, I got so hype, and then we get these, like, 
70s like intros of all the contestants with their nicknames that some make more sense than other and then we get TJ doing crowd work. Like, it was just such a beautiful introduction to this season. Yeah, the nicknames was very much given the same way I broke down, like, the the season 39 cast in the different buckets. Like, I had clear names for certain people, and there were clear nicknames for certain people. And then there was, like, ones that they kind of, like, reused. Tony, Tony time is, like, very basic, but they were very fun ones. So, like... I, I would love to know, like the right, as Akiva would say, and Yoji. I'd love to know the writers' room that was going on uh, behind the scenes when they're trying to come up with the nicknames for uh, almost everyone individually. A few people had some pairs. There was one uh, trio, obviously, but uh, you know, it was a nice touch to kind of walk us into this world. I'd like to mock you and be like, well, none of the names are as dismissive as like Nah, but some of them were quite dismissive um, in the in the formal nicknames. Also, I just noticed on video. It looks like I'm wearing a shirt that says just as drunk. I just want to be clear. <laughs> I'm wearing our unauthorized merch. Uh, tune into the video to check it out. Um, we have our uncle on this season. You know, the great <laughs> uncle. So we're, we're branching out the family tree. It's like, um, all right, let's, if you don't mind, because uh, I have organizational issues. Can we go in order they were introduced? <laughs> Sure, that sounds perfect. That's how I did it. It was the longest I've ever had to watch the first three minutes of a of an episode because I had to keep pausing because they were going too quickly with through the nicknames. But like pause, pause, pause. So it was, it was a lot of a uh, lot of work to get through all these nicknames. They kept going. I didn't realize how big the cast was until we were on like my twenty fifth bullet of uh, nicknames. Brian's gonna start watching on point two five x. No, but uh, literally. Reinvented <laughs> genre. Um. All right, Brad the beard. A little lazy. A little lazy. Yeah, especially, yeah, I mean, I guess that is what he's more known for, um, at least nowadays, his beard. I, it was great seeing the clip of him getting the wedgie that started one of the more uh, all-time challenge fights. Could have been Brad the Wedgie. That would have been a fun nickname. But he, he seems to be coming in pretty well fit. I mean, he, I feel like there's no dad bod on him. He seemed even leaner than maybe even in some of his recent seasons. So Brad is looking uh, like a, a decently high popularity pick, I would say, to maybe even win this whole thing, based off how he looks, at least. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's like kind of Brad's classic spot now. I mean, he made the final on all stars three. I feel like it's, it's just, you got to have Brad at this point. Uh, he's two and one in all star eliminations. One thing that's interesting as I did my, like, you know, semi-annual walk down memory lane to catch up on these people. One challenge final win for Brad overall in mm -hmm. his challenge career feels a little light for Brad. I would have it guessed he more. Even, he even said so. It feels light. It's been a while. Uh, I think the only season he won was Cutthroat when he won with his now ex-wife, I believe, is when he got his win. But he came close a number of times. I mean, he lost the duel final to Wes, I think, just because of, like, soccer, basically. So he he's definitely come close a number of times. I would imagine he's either made the final or one or two away from the final, like, five, six, seven times in his career. So... You know, he's always been like a, a very much like the the early days of a Laurel of a, always the bride maze, never the bride. But you know, at least he's got his one win, which other people on the season are still clamoring for their first. So he's got that one title. I just started uh, in the in the break in the off times. I started mm. watching some old seasons, and I just got to the break. season where Brad and Tori meet. When the episodes were only you know twenty two minutes, you could get a lot done in, in mm -hmm. three weeks. Uh, so it's funny to watch the the beginnings of. Hey, Brad these are only at forty five minutes, baby. We're we're moving and grooving. It's not like an hour and a half on MTV over here. So we're we're flying. I would love an hour and a half to challenge all stars. <laughs> Consider this my personal appeal. Well, today basically uh, was. We had two episodes. It was an hour and a half. So there we go. Um, Kara as the Lone Star. Also, the timing. I feel like if like you're bringing out Kara, I think you either like start with Kara or. You like build up to her. It was like Brad was first, like okay, and then they just went to car. I feel like either you start with car or end with car, or there's like a certain point in the middle where you're like, and here's the return to car. It just felt kind of odd just to place your second and the car is the lone star. That felt a little off. See, my problem is with the name. Like, only one person's gonna win this season, and you have to have a star to get to the final. So, is, is this a spoiler? Is she gonna be the lone star? <laughs> Or is it just a callback to her winning, like, the individual season back in her day? I don't know. That would be wild if the MTV just is – or Paramount Plus is spoiling the entire season in the first episode or first, like, 10 seconds. So something to watch. 
We'll see. I loved how excited TJ was to see her back. I mean, I think he's sort Mm -hmm. of the voice of the audience. Maybe slightly dulled because we did see her on um, a battle for a new champion. Obviously, just a short little appearance. Um, She's the, I think, the only person in the two episodes where we get their stats, like, on screen. I think so. I don't recall anyone else's. 42 challenge wins. (laughs) She's like, God bless who counted this and like what counted as a challenge. And she was on chance versus right. stars of that count. But 13 Olim wins, uh, two time champion, first female solo champion. Um, interesting. So is Ashley Millionaire Mitchell and doesn't count as a solo champion because she won with Hunter. He just won no money. Yeah. I mean, I guess for Hunter, I, think, I mean, I think he's declared a champ. I mean, he's in the books as a champion. He's just a zero dollar champion, unfortunately, for him. Like, same with Sarah. Sarah's a two time winner. One time winning prizes. <laughs> prizes. Yeah. I don't know um, what to do with my face sometimes. I'm making faces. I don't know what to do. It's also a lot of focus to keep the eyes on. But here we are. I don't know. I'm still learning the video. You could look wherever you want. You could have like another screen pulled up. I don't know that you could see me. That's true. I could run some tests. Like, <laughs> but, uh, but no. So we have Veronica, Tina, and Rachel as the BFFs mm. packaged together. And for any sort of new viewers... I think this is appropriate to to package them together. We've obviously seen Tina and Veronica a bunch um, recently in All Stars and yep. regular challenges, but to have Rachel back, the three of them together is really just like the height of old school road rules, real world, the challenge energy. Yeah, like if you wanted the face of like the old school era, like the single digits, early teens, like you would put these three right at the top. So. Um, it's very fun to have them all back. Very fun to have the old clips uh, of uh, their shenanigans back in the day. So uh, it's based, especially based on the first two episodes, it looks like the three of them are going to be very big storytellers, very big narrators, and very big like plot directioners of at least the early part of this game. So good to get the spotlight on them early. Yeah, I also thought there was maybe a little bit of foreshadowing because they all started, you know, talking about how they're different. Like Rachel's really intense and Tina likes to have a good time, but they're also good, good friends. And Mm -hmm. I was like, are they going to be going in different directions or are they like primed to be the group that's going to like win extra stars to dole out to their friends? Just a lot of focus being put on the three of their friendship. Um, Just fine with me. A great quote from Rachel, quote, there are certain people that are challengers at heart and I'm one of them. I come to play and I demand respect. I was like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah, she does. Accurate. Accurate. Yeah. And multiple people throughout Kara noted it as well. Like having having Rachel there adds that level, a level of uh, importance and like uh, and scariness, I guess, to the women crop uh, this season. So um, and it's kind of a theme that especially some of the women point out, like this is a very, very strong women field uh, throughout. There's only a couple of uh, quote unquote layups that you would even toss in there. Um, so that's going to be like the big theme is like there really is nowhere to hide for the women. Like you're going into elimination, you're most likely going against someone very strong. Here, I have two grievances with the uh, mm. intro packages. First, to level set for any new viewers. I mean, you don't even have to be a new viewer. We last saw Rachel in 2012. So <laughs> any old viewers who missed her, Rachel's last season, uh, seven challenges total, two wins, one final, or her stats, uh, one making the final, not winning. Um, she has three children now and is married and has been actually seen in like the challenge fitness uh, videos, which you know they plug on All Stars. But she says that her kids watch the show, and I feel like her kids are very young to be watching this. As somebody whose uh, brain was broken by watching the challenge too young, <laughs> beware. I mean, the challenge nowadays is very much just like a sport. It's not like, you know, there's no like threesomes in a hot tub happening on the challenge. So it's a, I think it's almost like a, it's a more PG product now to watch. So I, don't, I wouldn't even put it past them. Mm. I mean, it certainly changed a bit since uh, Tina's last regular season of the challenge Tina five challenges total was our last on all stars two and three. Uh, she, I just watched when she, uh, was DQ'd for just punching Beth for no reason Ooh, and then went home and then yeah. was invited to appear at the reunion and like mock Beth. Like it's just crazy how differently <laughs> things are handled now for the better, for the better. <laughs> Classic times. What a time. Um, I do have another gripe, though, as promised. I was reviewing the Challenge Wiki, uh, thanks to Challenge Wiki for my stats, 
Um, and and they build Tina as having lost to Melinda in All Stars two and being medically evacuated in All Stars three. Didn't she quit against Melinda? Didn't she let Melinda like compete on her own? Or am I making that up? I think she, well she yeah she did the elimination. But I think she just like stood there right and just let Melinda like run. Yeah, I mean, and do, like, Define did the elimination. I don't think she participated. Well, she did it more than Janelle did this week. So. She has okay. that. She, <laughs> she showed attended up. Attended the arena. She did. She she punched her ticket. She was there. Not as, as a tennis marker. Right. <laughs> no, no pun intended. I mean, I believe, and I don't remember anything, but I do think I was, I want to say you were too, down on Tina returning after All Stars 3. Now, does Rachel being there kind of like lift Tina's return stock? Probably, I think, as like a trio, they make a lot of sense to like all be together, and especially if their storylines like really develop this season and they all like go very far and, and things happen. Like, I think this boosts all of them as like a returnee grouping to like coming back to like All Stars Five. And if one of them wants to uh, kind of make the leap, maybe back over to challenge proper. So, I think there's a lot of possibilities for them. Um, and then Veronica, 12 challenges. I mean, she's, I think, the person who's been, like, on the most seasons in the new era, Veronica. I mean, she was last on Ride or Dies. It's been pretty recent. Um, last seen on All-Stars 3, on in the All-Stars platform, DQ'd in Episode 8. So, you know, Veronica has a variety of finishes. But, I, again, I'm excited to see her with the three, the two of them. It would be wild for the three of them to all be in the final together. I don't feel like that's likely, but it right. does seem like Rachel might be able to make up, you know, have some opportunities with the format to make up for uh, any physical needs of the team. At the very least, they might all be able to, like, make a deep run and, you know, be in, in the mix throughout. So it's going to be a, a tough to get one of them out, two of them out, especially the way this voting structure works, where one or two people could really try to drive this conversation. So there, there's possibilities for them three to be here till episode eight, nine, ten, for sure. All right, let's talk about the, I don't want to say breakout star because she's been a breakout star of all stars already. Uh, Ayana as the salad slayer. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted some All Stars continuation, like this nickname very much lives in the All Stars world. So we have that for uh, Ayana when you know, correct, I don't remember who she did it to, but correct me if I'm wrong. She like ate a salad that was left out, and whose salad was it? I don't remember, but she ate someone's salad, and it's it caused a, a big ruckus in in the community, and that's where the Salad Slayer nickname has uh has blossomed. Yeah, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. When I saw the Salad Slayer, I was like that vaguely rings a bell and that's it mm. um she ate jody's greek salad and she Jody. knew it was jody's and she didn't care yeah. according to entertainment weekly <laughs> okay. okay there we go uh, yeah. i think better known for i slept in my uniform because i wanted to win today but let's reference all stars i like it and should it be slayer like wouldn't it be salad stealer salad like swiper I feel like Slayer is not exactly the right verbiage there either. Not that I should be one to critique someone's English usage, but it doesn't seem like Slayer is really describing. That really just points to like I gotta love salad, just eats everyone's salad. <laughs> what really about exactly just what the salad? What about shorten it? You know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Whatever you're not sure, salad. delete. Delete or uh no, but we're gonna be talking about Ayana a lot as we get into the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. Um and now uh, there are a couple people as we go through where I'm like, all right, Brian's just going to talk about this person. Uh, the next person is one of those people. Set your clocks back. It's Tony time. Should Yeah, set the clocks back is interesting because wouldn't you want to like, <laughs> especially for Tony, I feel like you should want to look forward. I don't think you should want to like be pointing to Tony's past on the show because it's not exactly the best past. Uh, but it's very exciting to have Tony back um, as he, he talks about his two kids. Um, it's wild to flash back to his engagement and it still be the engagement, uh, a five year engagement, no judgment, but just a, a wild scene to flash back to like 2019 and the status is still the same. Um, but obviously they had like he talked about the, his house being destroyed from a hurricane and other, th other things that have popped up in his life. But, uh, it's great to have Tony back. seems like he's in a decent headspace. So that's good to say. Yeah, it definitely seems like Tony 2.0. So I'm excited to see Tony. Um, he took, I think, a good amount of time off last season in Final Reckoning in 2018. 
uh, it feels somehow like longer than that. Uh, it feels like a long time since we've seen Tony. Um, I, I'm happy to report that because this season was in the can so long, they did get married. Tony did Ooh. marry Alyssa in October of 2023. So semi-recently. <laughs> um, but it is crazy. Like his relationship with Alyssa has really been completely documented on MTV where, you know, he goes on, was it skeletons or like X revenge of the X's real world? It was like the same concept, but sometimes same concept. X's, sometimes yeah. Not. I think it was, I think it was skeletons. Cause that was Nicole season two, I believe. And I think that was just skeletons. And then, uh, he meets, um, is it Madison? Madison. I was Good just call. looking at her Instagram actually. And, How's she doing? Oh, Cause I know she had a rough patch. She's doing okay. Instagram looks good. Okay, um, cool. we'll take it. But but Alyssa shows up there, and then we see uh, Tony propose to Alyssa on a reunion of the challenge. Now he's showing up, still not married, giving us an update. And the next time we see him, he'll be like, "I did get married." If there's a reunion for this, or <laughs> they've recorded two years later, I don't know. Yeah, but Tony time is back. Tony time is here. I didn't think we would ever see him again. It's very because he was one of the names that for me popped up on the screen on this cast list. I was like, "Ooh." Tony's here, for sure. He's a rare contestant who stayed away long enough for me to really believe that he had he was done with the challenge. Yeah, and I think as opposed I, to a Leroy, it seemed like it was more like the show's doing than probably Tony's doing. But it, you know, he had some time off, which we could all we can all use. Um, and then we have Brandon the Assassin, whose last uh, season was our first season on the scene, free agents. Uh, wow. Never made a final, Brandon. Really here to to put in some work. Yeah, he's always kind of been on the outs. Uh, he's he's kind of always been in that spot of needing to like win his way, win a lot of eliminations. He has an all time moment of being DQ'd from an elimination before it starts because he uh, drank too much the night before and couldn't compete. He's uh he uh that they changed the rules since then. So that's an all time moment uh, back in the day challenge role for for boy Brandon Nelson. But it's good. It's great to have him back. And he's uh, properly billed based on your description as the assassin. And then Derek and Ryan as the besties. At first, it was like, this feels a little lazy. You did the BFFs already. Now you're doing the besties. Um, but it does sort of ring true through the first episode that, you know, Derek and Ryan are a package deal. Um, let's first talk about Derek, the man formerly known as Derek C. No need for the C this season because we don't have uh, Derek K, probably the more well-known Derek. Uh, mm -hmm. Last scene on All Stars 2, I think in general, his challenge career really has like never gotten off the ground despite multiple season appearances. And that and that comes up this episode where he's like Avery is pushing for him like he's just upset that he's never really gotten a chance to get past the first couple of weeks. Yeah, he's you know, he's very much looked upon as the layup usually on the guy's side that. If you're going in and he's, his name is up there, you could kind of like push his name in if you want to stave off elimination. I think all stars two or three, uh, whichever one it was, he was he was knocked out either first or second. His, his other seasons is usually knocked out pretty early on. But at least this season, as it, it, it helps in his favor, he does have a crew beyond just Ryan. Like Avery's there. Jasmine is there from his, uh, his real world season. So he has some people. And if he kind of recruit a few more, there is there's a little bit more of a longevity hope for for both Derek and Ryan uh, if they could try to make it through. It was fun to have like the, the next three here are all like the uh, the couples in varying degrees of couplehood. So this was you know the best friend couple, and then we have the married couple. Cam You're not going to yada yada over Ryan and not let okay. me get to talk about my Tony time, my favorite. Like you could have done that with every other person on this season. You know. That I love Ryan Kehoe. So I, just the disrespect, truly, uh, is is hard to recover from. But I I will have to. Um, what's funny in my rewatching is like I, I said this uh, to no response in a group chat we have with you, Matt and Scally, about how like I'm watching uh, Kenny. I'm watching four seasons now with Kenny, uh, appropriately canceled from the show, Kenny. Um, and, and I was like, he's so lucky he was in such a small pool back then. There are so many people, especially with like 22-minute episodes, that really get almost no airtime and keep coming back. Bananas included. Like, mm -hmm. he goes out his first season immediately. And there's a world that he's not invited back if that happens this, like, early on. What a, what a sad world that would be. What a sad world. Can't have that. be fine. 
Um, no, I I definitely think Johnny Bananas is is a deserves some credit for the show continuing this long. Um, I'm not insane, but Ryan is one of them. I watched his first season, Fresh Meat, and I'm like, why did I love Ryan so much? Like, I don't dislike Ryan, but mm -hmm. it's I really stumped for the guy. Doesn't get a lot of airtime in his earlier seasons. Um, no wins went out early in All Stars too. I'm thrilled they keep giving him a chance. Keep Ryan coming. I love him. Yeah, it is. It is surprising that we keep seeing him. I was surprised when they even like it was fun to see his name on the first time he got called back for All Stars. It's at this point every time his name pops up, so it is. It is very surprising because he's he, you know he doesn't add a lot more than what he's been adding, which is okay. But he was in the mix this time. He was you know he was in the Ayana story, so he's he's got that going for him. All right, now you can yada yada the couples because truly, I mean, these next four are the ones that the listeners and we have seen probably the most recently. Yeah, we have a longtime re retiree, Leroy, uh, <laughs> returning after his uh, two-year uh, retirement. I don't think the the pension check even started to clear yet by the time he decided to turn around and, and return back. But he's here with Cam. Um, their kid is now about to start his freshman year of college. That's how long ago this was. But um, So they have one kid. They're both here. Um, very fun to have Cam and Leroy back in the mix. Um, and then not as much fun to have uh, the awkward exes, uh, Nicole and, uh, and Laurel, as the other couple. Well, I think that the 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 long the how long it's been joke is doesn't don't Kim and Leroy now have another kid since this filmed? I think they did. I think you're right. She was pregnant they, again. I don't know if she's had the yeah. So they have two kids. They've had another kid since. Since this show filmed, we, are, we really are watching like a time capsule. It's kind of crazy, like of, of where this this show uh, was filmed, um, and now how much further on we have. Like three, I think we've covered three challenge seasons across different platforms. By the time this one has now finally hit the air, there's another one filming right now. So it's a lot of stuff going on in the challenge world before we got All Stars Four. But we got Cam and Leroy. We also have Nicole and Laurel. So here's the thing about Nicole, and, and there's a lot of bitterness going both ways, but mainly like from Laurel to Nicole in the first few episodes. I yep. mean, we're definitely going to see a real roller coaster ride from what we know about what happens after the season. But like, you know, Nicole's got to give cre Laurel credit where credit is due because there's no world we're seeing Nicole on All Stars 4 without her connection to Laurel. I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like Nicole, I mean, we see a lot of, I mean, look look, look up and down the names of the list that we have here. I mean, Nicole's as deserving as a number of other people uh, in the mix. I think her relationship and flame out and storyline with Laurel certainly adds to it, but it's not like this is all stars for battle of the exes. So I think there's a, there's a world where even if Laurel says no, Nicole is, is in the mix here. I, well, Nicole is single. I was like, single Nicole? I keep, she's in a relationship now. It's hard to put. I stand by it. I think I think it's 80% of the reason that Nicole is on the season. Um, I think it's, yeah, maybe a little bit high. But I mean, look, I'm, I think it definitely it definitely greatly increased her chances, the, the stuff with Laurel, for sure. Um, let's talk about, you know, Ayana, not a breakout surprise. Let's talk about my breakout surprise from the two episodes, which is Kifla, the great uncle, as you said, uh, Age 49 now, I think age 47 to 48 on the show. Last seen in 1998. Icon. Wow. That, yeah, 1998 challenge. I think the first one, right? He was the first part of the first ever win. Um, incredible that he's back. I mean, that's like what the this show is, the, the origination that Mark Long wanted was like to give all these people that we haven't seen in legitimately 30 years, like a chance to like return and show what they're made of. And like Kefla is very much that personality right here. Yeah, I loved him. Is it Kefla I or Kefla? Kefla. Uh, I feel like TJ I, calls I, him Kefla. Kefla. Throughout. Okay. Um, Kefla. how much money? Uh, they announce the th they show the clip of the amount of money he's winning when he wins, but he won with a team. Do you want to guess how much money he won from the Road Rules team bank account in the first season, nineteen ninety eight? Just him as he, an individual. Just him. I'll say he took home twenty thousand. Six thousand six hundred and thirteen dollars from a total prize pot of thirty nine thousand five hundred and eighty dollars. Hey, you know what? In today's dollars, that's like, you know, twenty grand. So I think I'm still right. 
Uh, let's talk about Adam coming in as Adam 4.0. I kind of followed what he was saying when he was talking about 2.0, but then I guess Adam 3.0 we didn't see on television, and now Adam 4.0 we're getting uh, yeah. on, on All Stars. It seems like for good reason that we didn't see 3.0 because I think if we based off of how we described it, if we saw 3.0, uh, he might have been canceled in terms of reality and life. So here we are, 4.0. We're rooting for Adam. Uh, very much in the new phase. I mean, he, him as well as some of these other people seem like they have a really good head on their shoulders. He seems like in pretty good shape, condition, and you know, he's, you know, kind of re- rebirthed himself. Uh, and this is like his uh, launching platform. Oh, definitely. If the rebirth happened in uh, 3.0, I'm glad I didn't see him rebirth himself. Um, <laughs> but I just want to thank Adam because he he does uh, do a throwback and he calls the challenges missions, which has mm-hmm. been one of my key takeaways from the past, like. I want to be calling these missions and, and we, you know, in the last 10 years of us doing the podcast had to, had to discuss this too, of like the whole thing's a challenge. That's what he says. Right. And like, that's an iconic line. That is the correct reaction. We've all been okay. Calling the daily challenge, the dailies, the challenge yeah. on the show, the challenge, everything is a challenge. It was so relatable. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree. Cause it, I always put it in my notes as the challenge, but not the episode It's just the daily yeah, they need, they need to come up with a better name. They should have just stuck with mission. Mission's great. I know it's like mission implies like you're accomplishing something and like daily fits a little bit more, but at least on All Stars, I feel like TJ should have pushed it being called mission. It is a mission. It's a mission. Your mission is to win. Hmm? I know you're not getting money at the end of it or a BMX bike or a Fandango subscription, but um, it's mission. Yeah. A uh, speaking of mission, Tyree billed as man on a mission. Oh, I didn't. And I didn't tell you, Adams. Adam is just new and improved. Not even yeah. a nickname, more of a description. This was this was one of those where it's like I feel like they were like, "Oh my god, we forgot Adam. What do we put in?" Well, he's he's four point so he's new and improved. We can go with that. Um, yeah, Tyree. The one thing I about Tyree, did he never have an E on his name? Yeah, definite spell spelling change. Okay, for sure. Interesting. Interesting choice to drop the E. Keep the one. Keep drop the E. <laughs> new Tyree. It maybe that was like a that. spelling mistake on an early season, and they just went with it. And now he's like, "Hey, um, FYI, this is how I spell it." I don't know. It could be, but yeah. So we got Tyree. Um, what was his nickname? Man on a mission. I have interestingly found some people from earlier seasons who don't participate anymore who change their names for like professional and Google reasons. Like they, they're now operating under different spellings of their names. I will not dox those people now uh, out of respect. I could see a scenario down the road where you're, you're no longer just Ali last year and you're changing your name to like wipe your footprint off the RHAB community. I could see that happening. Uh, I don't know about mm. that. Uh, something would have to be really bad. You would probably have to get so deeply canceled that I wouldn't want to be affiliated. And that could be, be it. Change. Yeah, that's true. I don't want to put out any more bad Twitter takes. Um, here's the thing about Tyree I have absolute Mandela effect that he has been on a prior all-stars he has not but I like really deeply believe that he had he was Mm. he's very similar and it unfortunately goes you know no spoiler it goes very similar to him in the first uh, week here but he's very much like uh, Tori's ex uh, I think he was also Derek of being maybe the single worst reality competition competitor in the history of the world, where I think he's lost. He, I mean, he'd be an over an elimination. He gets knocked out like episode two or three, like every single time he's on. Seems like a very nice guy. Got a daughter. Hope is, you know, hope his life's going great. He is just not meant to do well on these like challenges. He just does horribly every single time. And I feel bad. I feel bad, but he does. Well, at least he has your well wishes. Yeah, he's five and zero in eliminations now. You know, six oh and zero. Oh, and, oh and yeah. Five. Sorry, I wrote it the wrong way. Uh, he has lost. He's lost six out of six eliminations, including the one he goes out in here. Like that's almost. Um, I think that's harder to do than go six and zero because you have to keep getting called back for six separate seasons to go zero and six. Well, he's been on seven seasons because one time he was medically evacuated. Well, there you go. So, right. so um, yeah, I mean, I like Tyree. Tyree always – I've watched a couple of seasons where he's gone out early recently, and, like, he always leaves – is a good sport about it, which I appreciate. I'm happy to see him get a chance. I'd ha- be happy to see him get another chance. I mean, mm-hmm. I thought you were going to say he's similar to Derek C. on this season, and that, again, it's just, like, he tries, he's got a heart, but, like, 
it just doesn't work out for him as a mm-hmm. little Charlie Brown and Lucy with the football. We didn't get any uh, throwback to the, I think him and Jasmine had a fling, uh, a very short lived fling because, you know, Tyree went home episode one, but they had a fling. I think it might've been rivals or rivals two, one of them where uh, he was on, but they, they didn't mention it. No mention. I guess Tyree doesn't like end up on the show long enough to make that even yeah. worth discussing. Um, Let's talk about Flora, uh, the other like real surprise uh, throwback as Mrs. What did I sign up for? Relatable yeah, energy. I, very relatable, iconic. Uh, and that was like her theme throughout, like right before the daily. I just don't want to die again. Very relatable. Um, she very much it fits the mold of like they had to pick like a random person off the street and toss them in and see how they would do in the challenge world. Uh, and she's like doing great so far. You know, it's another one going back to the Kefla of like hasn't been on in almost 30 years, but here she is. Uh, and it's it's a wild to see someone come back since what was her last season? Probably been like 2000, 1999, 2001, something like that. So 2002, like, 2002. So to come all the way back from, you know, 22 years ago or I guess 20 years ago when this was filmed, it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, she said something crazy to Ayana like right away where she's like, do I have your consent to tell you you're like have an amazing body? And I was like, I'm in on this kooky person. <laughs> like, that's crazy to say. Uh, she said, do you consent to me telling you how beautiful your body and your boobies are? Um, which, according to the challenge wiki, she was on an episode of Botch. So I will look into that. Yeah. Uh very interesting uh, fun facts. I-, I think Flora is fun. I kind of thought when I saw Flora and Kifla were billed that they were both prior challenge champs. Um, not the case uh, for Flora. Maybe not but- yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, all right. Well, yada, yada, Avery. And we'll go to Jay, uh, uh, who uh, is the guy. That's my girl. Avery's Avery. back. I'm very, I'm worried about her, but we'd love to see Avery back. Um, the queen, the Portland queen is back. Um, she has her, you know, we already talked about the Avery and uh, the Ryan and Derek crew. She's also very close with Jasmine. But, you know, this is a tough spot for her. This is very much like an old school world, as she points out, is kind of the discussion. There's a lot of old school people, not a lot of newer people on, on All Stars. And she's kind of in a weird limbo of not being in like the Tina Veronica old school era, but also not the level of like a Laurel and Cara of like the newish school. So it's going to be a very interesting ride for for my girl Avery. But however long it lasts, I am so happy that she's here. I think it's funny because, again, Mandela Effect is – can I just, like, blame Mandela Effect for just, like, a bad memory and and me misstating facts? That's what it was crazy Um, (laughs) I, like, thought she had appeared more recently. So have we never done a podcast that Avery's been on? For, sorry. Uh, well, she Have was we on never X's done is two, right? Or three? Yeah. So that that Either followed free that followed free agents. I think we also did battle the X's too. Anyway, but that okay. followed free agents. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe did Johnny continue on longer? I just feel like I have a memory uh, that like she was on more recently than she even was, but. Anyway, uh, yeah, she's the one who really gets roasted in the name. She's billed as the long shot. I do think part of it is her own, like, the way she, her negative self-talk, really. Like, she's really talking mostly herself mm-hmm. about how she's not ready to be here or maybe in over her head. Um, one thing that I didn't remember is that she was on Rivals 3 with Leroy for two episodes before getting medically evacuated for Leroy. And yeah. I was like what on earth could have been the rivalry, the source of the rivalry between Avery and Leroy? And then I looked it up and I was like, ah, yes, one of the most tenuous bullshit rivalries of all time. What even was it? Like, remind me. Yeah, so uh, according to, like, I think it was Challenge Wiki, uh, they they claim that Leroy and Naya eliminated Avery and Johnny on Ooh. Battle of the Exes 2. So that was the first source. Mm-hmm. And on an episode of The After Show, Leroy stated that he believed Johnny said the story regarding Johnny and Avery's breakup saying that she was a liar so that Perhaps after show appearance you know. got uh got them built together best case scenario for avery i mean if you could if leroy could just be like you're a liar and now you're leroy's partner i mean if his back didn't get clipped yeah maybe they would i won. mean look it's tough to have for a leroy to have any true rivals so trying to, no one hates leroy so they gotta like stretch whatever they can if they wanted to have a rival season with uh, leroy on it so good for avery getting that shot 
quick, rotate your mic because Matt LaGuardia is going to make fun of you for your blue the light. blue shine. light. I noticed it also. I noticed it also. <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk about Jay. I mean, Jay really does most of the talking. He comes in, huge chip on his shoulder. He's billed as the guy who couldn't drink the drink. What else could he have been billed for? Uh, he makes the final. And, and honestly, Jay and Jenna in that battle of the X's season, to me, stick out as one of the most like quintessential teams that make the final as like a protected layup intentionally. Mm -hmm. Like people want them in the final and then they perform exactly as expected, probably worse than expected. And they go out because they cannot uh, drink the gross the beverage. Yeah, but I, as Jay points out, I mean, this is a, you know, he could spin zone this, but it's a fair spin zone that season. Um, if you finish last in the daily, you do go into uh, elimination automatically, and they they did never finish last. I mean, they got down to six, five, four teams, uh, even in the final four, they uh, didn't finish last, so they had that. Um, do you think people genuinely are just coming up to him on the street and being yes. like, "You're the dude who didn't drink the drink"? Yes, I don't know that like someone's done it in the last like three years, but uh. I think after that, like certainly, I probably I put it at least two a year. That's tough. Minimum. Maybe. Do you think no matter what he does this season, he let, let's say he wins, he dominates, he wins five, six, seven missions, he dominates the final, wins the whole thing. I, I think the people who would come up to him on the street and be like, "Aren't you the dude that didn't drink the drink?" I think that's how they would still just know him. I don't think they're they're gonna come up to him and aren't you the dude that won All Stars four? I think they would be. Aren't you the dude who didn't drink the drink? Look, I can't speak to somebody who would go up to him and say that because I would certainly know him as the guy who didn't drink the drink, but I wouldn't say that to him. So, I'll say this: if he shows up and wins this season, he'll earn a lot of my respect for whatever that's worth. Nothing. Sure. Like, but, I mean, we've seen people like John A who weren't the best physical competitors show up on the, you know, and Janae has a more sympathetic story because she was like under the thumb of like a mm -hmm. horrible other person. But we see people come on all stars and redefine their reputation and slay. I, again, the, I can't speak for the man on the street, the hater on the street, but I think like we're open to it. I mean, look, I'll say this for Jay. I didn't, I wasn't excited to see him on the list, but it's got Corey upside of like somebody who beats the drum so frequently of like, I should be on the show. Give me a chance at the challenge MTV, put me back on the show. I want to redeem. He wants it so bad. And he kept up that energy for so long, despite it being one of his greatest humiliations, he wants another chance at it to show back up. And like, if nothing else, I've got to give it up for his like love of the game and respect mm -hmm. for the game and drive to compete. So I I'm happy. Like anybody who works that hard, I'm happy to see get a shot. Yeah, but I think his Twitter is still JG MTV. So he's not hiding from the MTV part of it. JG couldn't drink the drink. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about Jazzy J, Jasmine, who is inviting us all in the first episode to her divorce party. Love that. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. Fresh start, like for my voice. Um, you know, breaking free. This is where I was hoping we would get the oh, and Tyree's looking pretty good. Maybe I'll rekindle that. We didn't get that. Um, but you know, Jasmine is not someone who's gonna like strike the fear in the heart of you in the in an elimination. Probably not gonna win a daily unless it's like a very specific one, but she's willing to get in the mix. She's not gonna be bullied and pushed around. Like if she hears her name as as was evident in episode two, she's gonna light the spark and let it and let it burn. So uh, she is a very fun personality to have in the mix. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how somebody who people are less threatened by an elimination, like this goes for Avery also, probably like how the format's gonna you know help or hurt them. I mean, she definitely gets helped uh, because people don't want to vote her into an elimination. Uh, this episode but um i think ultimately a lot of people are going to want to you know go in against her and be able to win a star so we'll see what happens there um what's the do you know like, if i have to cough obviously i guess you're still mute but people but i heard the me. cough i know but i didn't mute because then i realized people could just see me so i still feel like mute? a lot of our listeners are listening on on okay. audio mediums I'll, 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 I'll still mute for my coughs <laughs> I have control F breast in my notes because I was looking for <laughs> for the quote to Ayana. Um, anyway, do, you know, a funny stat I saw in Challenge Wiki. Do you know how much money Jasmine has won on the challenge? 
Uh, I mean, my gut says zero dollars. It's not zero. Okay. Otherwise, that would be a really mean. <laughs> like, want to hear something hilarious? How much has she won? Zero. How much have we won? Zero. Uh, how much <laughs> has she won? <laughs> oh, a thousand dollars. Five hundred for winning the fro- Frog Smash Challenge on Rivals Two. I because I saw that amount yeah. and was like, that's such a small amount. I have to figure out where she won this from. With taxes, it's like a few hundred bucks. All right, a, a, a nickname that also could have been used for you, probably Ace as the dude. To, like, <laughs> I thought you could say the hand. I, I thought we we're jumping straight to the hand model. <laughs> I haven't seen your hands up close, <laughs> and I'm all set. Uh, um, nothing really for me to say. Uh, I've, again, I've been watching a lot of Ace on older seasons. Uh, we saw him lose episode one to Latarian and All Stars one. I'm okay to see him getting another shot here. See, see what happens. Mm-hmm. I, he is just kind of the dude to me. Yeah, that he is living up to the dude vibes. Um, I mean, tough break to get Latarian in episode one. I think he was Latarian went on like a beast run that season. There were like there was no knocking him out at all. So, no slouch to lose to him uh, in the in that elimination. So, it's, yeah, nice to see Ace here um, being a dude. Uh, let's talk about Steve, the hand model, because honestly, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I've clearly put a lot of work into to doing this. I don't, I don't have any read. The hand model meant nothing to me. I thought it nothing, was a joke. Nothing. I to thought, me. I, even as they were going through the confessionals, <laughs> I thought it was a complete joke. And then I, at a certain point, it kept going that I realized, that, oh no, this just must be true. He must just be a hand model. Um, but then you talked about COVID impacting it. I feel like, why would like would COVID really impact the hand modeling game? I guess all. Well, I think he said he got down. sick and his oh, hands changed as a result of being sick. That's tough. That's tough. At least he didn't get pushed into a an iron that was left on from a puffy shirt. So it's got that better. Let's see your hand modeling skills. Do you have an object you can hand model around? Let's see. I have uh, a little statuette of a uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You know, hold her <laughs> it's like... Here's my little hands. I don't know how to like. This feels really creepy. <laughs> You're like, not oh, hired. Good. This is really, really hired. creepy. They're not hired. What is this guy? Hired. This is oh, another Ruth Bader Ginsburg. This is a keychain. How many RBGs are in your immediate reach? There is, there is two. <laughs> there are two. Well, okay, I don't great. see a third. Everybody should have at least two. At uh, least two. Um, all right. Uh, let's talk about Janelle. Last last build, the spot you thought should have gone to Car- uh, I was at Carla. Kara as the fearless one, a little bit ironic given how she goes out. Yeah. I'm disappointed with a capital disc because <laughs> I really had high hopes for Janelle. She made the final in All Stars 2, two. You know, haters will say she should have won that final, um, given, you know, certain things. Um, I really thought she was going to, you know, slay the house here. And for her to go out on a quit. Because of Ayana, when like the entire house agrees with her, that's the other thing. Like I, I get upset when like I'm consistently right and other people aren't seeing the light. But like everybody agreed, she could have gone to any single person who had been like, "We're not believing Ayana." Jasmine mm-hmm. didn't believe Ayana. Nobody believed Ayana, and I, I gotta you know respect people making their own mental health decisions. But I was just sad to see Janelle walk out early. It's just, it was the type of quit where I almost feel like I wonder. If we're going to see, like, in the press and Janelle's going to be like, well, actually, there was something going on. I just couldn't be there anymore. I didn't want to do this. Or maybe I had, like, an injury or something like that. Because it it was wild to just to just quit like that um, and let Ayana win. And, like, give her that satisfaction. Um, like, right on the cusp of elimination, it was a very bad look. Um, I'm surprised, it, like, more crap wasn't doled out to her. Which, again, leads to my notion that maybe there was more to it and they're just protecting her. Uh, for for whatever reason, so it, it's it was just a very odd moment, and yeah, as you said, like be, to be called the fearless one, and then to quit from your first act of fear is not great. All right, let's break down what we learned about the format now that we've gone through the contestants here. Now there is a teaser that a new person's going to join, and um, it is pretty widely like available online who that person is, but I don't think we need to. Actually, I don't even know. I thought it, I didn't even think it was real. I thought it was like, oh, they're just bringing someone in for uh, a mission. Oh. But, okay, cool. We got another. All right. Person. Well, then I definitely won't say it. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. I, let's I talk keep, about the I, I keep my Twitter cleansing very clean of like anything that could ever happen on these. It's seasons. just on the challenge wiki as a cast oh. member, okay, like which right. I don't I, consider I, I, a source of spoilers. Usually, it's definitely not a spoiler. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't opened up the wiki, so. 
Keep it clear. But all right, let's let's talk about the format, individual game, first reactions to uh one one winner. <laughs> <laughs> That's my initial reaction. We just went through this. Individual winners stink. It ruins the flow of the game. We'll see what they, the All-Stars, the structure, how it plays out and with the final and things like that. Maybe it'll work better here. Just give each winner 100K if you're like cutting back on the money. I don't know. Give each winner 125K. There's no reason to have an individual winner. None. Zero. It, do, it is never, ever, ever a benefit to the show. So I mean, they're not even saving money, right? Because they're they're... We're gonna have anyone else who finishes split fifty k. So they're giving away three hundred thousand dollars. I mean, they could give each mm-hmm. person one hundred and fifty and give bub kiss to the rest. Like it's right. not, you know, we'd complain about that, but not to this level. Um, here's what I like about the format. It seems pretty clear cut that six people are gonna make the final. And I first yep. thought this when I was like, all right, well, fifty k being divided seems like there's gonna be five other people in the final. And then when we learned about the stars, it becomes even more clear. I love the pictures of the star holders that are gonna remain in the house. Like again, I feel like we have a really clear cut road to the final and now we just let them play. And that's exciting to me. Yes. Now the the question and it kind of started developing with Janelle. I th- I don't know if it's gonna happen as much, but there was like a big groundswell support, especially after 39, of we don't like when people can avoid elimination, bring back the Red Skull twist, make people have to like win elimination to get into the daily. I think that is a, I don't like that structure, but I think this isn't as bad because there's a set number as opposed to the Red Skulls, which like it could have been the whole cast get one basically. So there's a very set number of six. And with the stealing and like the three and three, it doesn't really give credence to you should want to throw yourself into the elimination early because you could just have it taken from you later on. It's not like you get your elimination win. It's not like Tina is now punched into the final no matter what. Like she can lose her skull next week without a problem. So it's a little bit better. I still wish there was something with winning the daily that you can steal one or get one or be in the mix or something like that. I don't know. I would have to like brainstorm exactly how to do it, but this is definitely better than like the full like red skull twist that they had uh, for double agents or whichever one they did it for. I agree. I also like that somebody can win it for you. So there is, is still cool. an element you could avoid elimination in theory. Um, I, I, I think it will come it'd be interesting come into play when, you know, if somebody has a star who's in the bottom and then they get sent into elimination and then it's like, not even like they'd have to go in themselves. It's like, well, now I'm in and I'm going to win another star and let's see who I give it to. I think that's exciting. I think that's interesting. What I love that they've brought back is something we've been asking for for a while, which is to have the bottom finishers of the challenge, at least be the pool of people to vote against. Very, I think free agents was that. So it's like, Now, at least, like, if if I can understand, like, wanting a star to come out of winning the challenge, like, happens in the first episode, but I like at least that there's some consequence. You want to be out. And even what I love, too, is, like, you want to be out of the bottom. What I also love is, like, yeah, it's going to be a men's day and then a women's day, but the bottom finishers of the women are also punished. They don't get to be in on the deliberation in the middle group and decide Mm -hmm. who goes in. So everybody's got a reason to to fall in line in the challenge. Everyone's motivated to win, to either keep their safety star. Uh, But here's my actual question. Sorry. Uh, I'm getting distracted by myself in the video. Um, One thing I wasn't clear on is if you're in the winning group, but not the Mm -hmm. winner, do you also not get to vote? Or was that just an issue in the first? So I think that was just for the first one because there was like an individual one. So there's, there has to just be one or two winners, male. Like those were the winners, and then there was the winning group. So I think Kara and um, whoever, whoever else won, I don't remember. Like they were like super safe. But they got star. stars. But in nor- in a normal one, now that the stars are all given out, mm-hmm. are there going to be like there were only two? female winners in the group challenge I, i'm just kind of curious because it's like did the two men who won in the second episode group yep. get to also vote or they I don't think they so. won and they didn't get to vote i don't think so because i think they were in like the room hanging out with like the losing team like when leroy stormed in after that like i think they were just hanging out in there so i don't think they could vote 
But also, the, and there's when you win, you can't have your star taken from you, right? Well, that I wasn't sure. That's what I wasn't sure about is like, because again, the first episode, only the two actual winners were safe to have their star stolen. I think that was just a way probably to make it possible to steal a star. Otherwise, all yeah. six stars would have been safe. I need to see like another challenge to confirm like how it's going to work. But yeah, I think you're right. Probably that like the entire winning group will never be six people again. So those stars will all be safe in the winning group because otherwise you wouldn't be incentivized to win. If you didn't have a star, you'd rather vote in the main group. Actually, you still aren't. You're not necessarily incentivized to win if you don't have a star. You're basically giving mm -hmm. up your voting right. I don't know. Yeah. We'll the see. other aspect is for like the winning group. Um, if they don't have a star, they are going to be, no matter what, who, no matter who's voted in, they presented the option of tossing themselves in uh, if they want to, which is kind of cool because that would, you can replace one of the people going in. I think the way they did it with like the Red Skull twist was there was a person going in. You saw the elimination. TJ would ask the winning person team, do you want to go in? They would say no. And then they would vote, I think, to determine who the second person is. So this is kind of cool that both people are going to be in and you can like pick and choose who you want to replace. You get to see specifically the rules. Like It's not just you see what the structure looks like. TJ will lay out what the entire elimination is. And then you can make your decision of what you want to do. So there, there's always that extra boost of winning. Uh, whether or not your star is safe, you get like that extra layer of information. I reserve the right to change my mind, but I do think it's a little too powerful Powerful to hear the actual rules of the elimination. I wish that was like one step back. You can opt to go in. You could pick who you're going to go against. You could pick who you're replacing. And you see the elimination. Once you hear the rules, I'm like, wow, you're really like, you know, any given Sunday, anyone can win. But you're really, really uh advantage there but you know we'll see how it plays mm -hmm. out um yeah i'm really excited about the format yeah i mean it looks good so far um i i, I don't always typically like the men's day women's day i like everyone having the same skin in the game no matter what i know it's you still have some semblance of like on a, on a guy's day or a women's day when it's not your semblance but you don't have that same like do or die mentality in a daily so i would usually always prefer um everyone having to give like their full uh attention to a daily with the risk of going in but for this structure it seems to be okay the other t things that are interesting here and one's just like a slight way to combat that but i agree it's not it's not a full w work around it's not a full incentive but you can have your star stolen on a men's day if you're a woman and vice versa right. they can steal it to give it to somebody else so like if leroy wins and wants to give a star to cam your star is still in jeopardy even on a men's day um and i like that you don't have to beat somebody who has a star to get your their star yeah. i thought it was going to be like that it's just you can steal if you win so I'm I'm really really jazzed about the format. Very optimistic about it. Mm -hmm. I'm in. It's very much giving the same a similar structure of like the first season I ever watched with the with the island of needing like the keys to build the boat and stuff like that. So um, that season produced one of the bigger blind sides in the show history. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any level of a comparison to that uh, once we get down to the to the final stretch. Let's talk about the Ayana of it all as we get into it here because she really comes in aggressively at Cam in, like, a great way of, like, I'm standing in front of a challenge camp champion. Like, I know what's in front of me. Like, I mean, you just die to hear someone say what Ayana says to Cam uh, here. And then I was a little surprised when Cam went to Jasmine and was like, I kind of love hate Ayana. <laughs> like, I love annoy her. Yeah, I, th I think that's gotta be more driven from like cam like watching the game tape of how ayana's you know the salad slayer on her other seasons of being a little bit worried of what if she comes after my salad i don't know what that's gonna mean i don't want ayana on my bad side so i think that's gotta just be more from like reputation cam's conversations with other people i would imagine cam is still very tapped into the challenge world of all regards so uh, i'm sure there's been people in her ear filling her in with stuff if she's not uh, fully watching it herself, even so, that it's, that's got to be very much like a preconceived notion that uh, Cam and I'm sure other people had of of Ayana going in, and you know her actions didn't necessarily push that notion uh, out the window. 
Yeah, we have, you know, Janelle is going around not making it, you know, quiet about how she feels about Ayana in the same way that Nicole is flagging, you know, the stuff with Laurel. So I think those are some riffs early on that are becoming exposed and good on cam for for picking up on it. Uh, but we'll see where that goes. Uh, let's talk about the mission, the challenge mission daily. Yeah, I was worried the entire uh, season was going to be named uh, with pun stars, but just episode one, which I'm okay with, you know, fit the theme for the first one. Uh, this one, <coughs> reach for the stars, reach for the stars. Um, everyone had their own lane with uh, eight boards, and they had to match up a star puzzle uh, onto the board based off where the holes are in each of the stars. This is how we usually do it, and again, with the video looks kind of weird, I'm like making weird hand motions. Uh but yeah, they match up the eight of them uh, to their various sports. Um, all happening at once, which big plus. So big fan of that. We love one heat. Um, yeah, I can understand why you didn't remember that they're in South Africa. That was the reveal to the pop quiz because uh, TJ tells us they're known for their pears and their apples and then says, uh, like, how about these apples? Mm -hmm. And then they do a gag of him, like, missing the catch, like, a few mm -hmm. times. And love the energy of All Stars. Had absolutely nothing to do with the challenge. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a great combination. Uh, you know, again, as you said, most importantly, they're all going at once. But a little bit of puzzle, a little bit of endurance, uh, a good, a good starter challenge. Super hot day. I don't know if you knew that. It was a very hot day that day. Uh, so I had to get some water. Maybe if Brad took the sweater off his face, it wouldn't be <laughs> as difficult to get through. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like TJ, TJ was like, please get some water. Please no one like die. It's only episode one. We don't have that many alternates to like drop in here. So everyone stay hydrated. Um, but yeah, this is a very simple, this is like the perfect type of daily you want to see. It's very straightforward. It's very easy. You can follow. There's no crazy bells and whistles yeah, with the monster well, truck. It's not easy to do. We're not crazy. Yeah, so this is this is good. Um, and it's like, a, you know, it's, it's a good test of endurance. You know, I how you're feeling under pressure when things are going badly. So uh, it's it's a good uh, little combination here to get things cooking. Yeah, so Brad wins. Kara comes in second. Uh, so And then the 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 six star holders are going to be Brad, Adam, and Brandon. And then it's Kara, um, Avery, and Rachel. Keefla and Tony, you know, pushing into the top six. But they're, you're, they're uh, five and six for the men, so they don't get stars. Mm -hmm. Four and Great five moment. Men. Great moment with Tony time. Uh, diving forward, pulling his flag, but it turns out to be Veronica's flag. My question. Yes. Shouldn't Veronica yeah. be done? Oh, I thought you said should Tony be DQ'd? <laughs> I would say or, or that. But also, you pull your flag, Veronica's done. It's like, I don't know, you accidentally score in your own uh, goal in soccer. It's an own goal. It counts. Veronica should be done. She shouldn't even have been in the bottom group. So then what does Tony do? Does Tony have to go and take over from yeah, where Veronica is? Or that. That could be good. Yeah. Okay, so you think Tony should be DQ'd? And for, in fairness to them, I now Tony doesn't do this, but there were repeat colors. Tony just pulls the one next to his, but there were like two red ones. It was a little uh, unclear. Well, don't, don't get me started with the colors when they go down to the six teams. There's only six teams <laughs> in the next thing, and they're going with blue and light blue to start. So I think they were very much stretched for their color budget of what they could possibly do. They had peach, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I thought your complaint was going to be that the colors were invisible except for a stripe, <laughs> a small stripe on the helmet. Also that. I mean, blue, light Light blue, orange, peach, which is basically light orange. Like, toss a red in the mix. Like, it was crazy. I think they had four, like, three paints and white. And so it's like, we gotta put white in this orange and call it peach. But yeah, I really thought there was gonna be more to it with Tony Pull Veronica's thing instead of just TJ making fun of him. But you know. yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. I, I think that would have been crazy, but I would have been here for it. It would have been all stars energy for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I want to shout out Keefla, who, you know, comes in, in third place, sorry, fourth place overall for the men, which is awesome. Like first, mm -hmm. first go out, one of the older guys there. Uh, he's, he, I know it's your favorite thing. Like he, he's going for a million hearts and he's getting it playing for people who feel like it's impossible. Let's, let's go for the go for the one prize. We don't need any heart winning. Um, but it was it was very emotional to see him so emotional of like when he pulled his flag, he sees his name there. Like this is like such a cool moment, and you know it felt very genuine. This very much like he's not going on the show after twenty five years of like and then 
faking things for the for the camera. Like he, this is, I'm sure, a very genuine moment from him. That'd be like he probably never thought in the wise wildest dreams he would ever be back on like the challenge and doing this type of stuff. So uh very cool to see him so uh emotional about it. Yeah, his participation like predates social media. It's like when people like went on the real world for like or road girls for like the experience and then went back to their Literally. lives. Imagine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but the bottom is going to be Tina, Flora, Veronica, and Jasmine for the women, and Leroy, Tyree, Derek, and Steve for the men. Womp, yeah, not womp. not a great showing from Leroy. Um, but as I've seen in the in the nominations, he has uh, the best. If you want anyone in your corner keeping you safe from elimination, it's it, you could make a case it would be Cam. Um, and when you're married to her, even more so. So Cam will uh, have Leroy's back no matter what. So Leroy. Was in the bottom, but if all if you're gonna lose a daily in the bottom with based off this structure, this was a decent one to lose. There was many options that Leroy can uh, not many, but there were a few options that Leroy was able to avoid the spotlight. It was a real bummer. I was like, can't production just change the order and make this women's day? Like, we're really mm-hmm. gonna risk Leroy. But as you said, in the nominations, you know, Cam just immediately is like, Can Leroy not be a choice? <laughs> just like go for it and respect. And everyone yeah. kind of agrees with her. Um what I thought was interesting here is it becomes clear everyone's very open about talking about, you know, the metagame, the relationships they're coming in with. And Keith was like, uh, if everyone's going to be voting based off relationships, like, I'm going to be in trouble. And everyone's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> like you are going to be in trouble. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, TJ points out, he emphasizes it many times, like your political game, your social game is like most important this season. Uh, so I don't know if there's any extra level to that that's going to be building down the road as to what that particularly means or if that just means like you want someone to help you win a star you need like to get tossed into the right elimination to win a star or if there's gonna be something more to it but the the social game the political game is going to be heightened even more so um and it kind of it started from here uh, shout out to Ryan, who I thought did good, speaking of the political game, where he's like, you know, it's all we really have, Kefla, the relationships. We don't even really know who did the worst. Like, people weren't finished. You don't know. It's like smart rephrasing because Derek seemed to be decidedly the la- in last place based on what we hear from everybody else. It is fair, though, because they didn't actually finish. So you don't know who would have finished last. People were in last at a certain time, but it's not done. So you're not truly last. That's why Ryan keeps coming back. Mm-hmm. Keeps getting the invite back. Good, good uh, rephrasing. Um, the nominations that are going to be Tyree and Steve. No real surprise there. Because, again, in the beginning, we got a good setup of, like, the existing relationships in the house. And Derek and Leroy both seem pretty insulated at the moment. So, you know, sad. I, I didn't want to see Tyree. And, and you know, Steve, like, did make a name for himself in the last All-Stars. I think mm-hmm. it's not a surprise, really, that he's back. So, you know, I'm, I'm bummed at this point to see anybody go. I'm like so excited about this. Yeah, there's no one I'm screaming, get off my screen. So that, that feels good. Here we are. I'm sure Emily is thrilled to not hear you screaming at the television. <laughs> you would think so. You would think so. <laughs> we, we got the next star pun. Um, this is also where I got genuinely worried that they were have to come up with like a thousand different star names. But this was Catch a Falling Star. Uh, very interesting Is it still one. called the arena, by the way? He called it the arena. He did. Okay. Either. I, I thought somebody two. called it Arena, but yeah. I didn't right. catch it. In, I didn't catch it in episode one, but in episode two, he, he definitely said like, "Welcome back to the arena." Um, so we have we have the arena. I guess that's the official name. I feel like that's been it for a while now. So we're just done coming up with names. Yeah, well, it prevents us from getting canceled because some it of the does. past names were not so historically friendly. Yeah, not great. So we got the arena. Catch a falling star. Um, they're in basically a giant mud pit. Uh, with balls getting shot into the mud pit, and a few of them have star. Golden Star logos, like you're playing Quidditch, trying to catch the snitch. Uh, there are 12 of them. <laughs> the first one to uh, collect 12, uh, getting them out one at a time and putting them into a little cylinder tube uh, uh, wins it. I kind of love the environment of this. Like, I, I love that there kept being ca- regular cannon blasts. It was a little bit big brothery that they just kept mm-hmm. like spitting out balls. Yep. This was like fine. I, right. It was fine for me. Yeah, I mean, there was some uh, audience help as the Laurel was really trying to help uh, Tyree uh, find the ball to to no avail. It seemed like Steve had a strategy of like stockpiling the balls, which feels weird because you just need them all. So I don't know what he was like waiting for because theoretically Tyree could have found his stockpile and used his balls himself. But 
all of a sudden, like I think Ty- Tyree was up like 10 to 4 or something like that. And all of a sudden, it was like 11 to 11 um, up until the last one. And Steve was like, oh, yeah, I just had one more over here. So I win. It was just very oddly narrated by Steve. Yeah, I think he probably only started making that pile like when he started closing the gap to go one and one. But um, yeah, I feel like we do see that in similar challenges on like a Big Brother where it's like, oh, I started uh, in the OTEV. I started like putting right. things where I knew where they were. Um, but I think there's like one part where he just puts five in a row. And it's like, I think that's where he like found a little I guess so. Bushel. But with but with Otev, you're stockpiling the answers because you don't need like that name for that question. You're saving that name for a future question. All the stars are the same. It wasn't like you were saving the 11th star when you had 10 already. Like the, all stars are the same. So it, it just didn't make sense like why he'd be stockpiling. Yeah, I mean, I guess it does make sense to like, you know, much like you reaching for your various RBGs, if you're like in one area and you can find like six balls without making the trip up and down before and jumping in and moving all the balls, if you can kind of like gather your RBGs or in this case, your snitch balls um, and put them into the tube. But, you know, who are we to say it, it works? I was I was I will admit I was rooting for Tyree here, um, but TJ gives him a goodbye that, you know champions haven't gotten a, a quote i really really hope we see you in the future you're a badass which is like is that a reference to inferno 3 which he also was eliminated first on mm. uh, maybe tj's also been re-watching some old seasons in the off season two years ago mm-hmm. <laughs> the off season two years ago yeah i mean it's a good bye. it's a good it's a good goodbye for uh tyree with no e uh maybe he should add an e next time like keep changing it up every time he comes back with his name and maybe that'll help him going forward. But you know, to the season, not 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 his time. And Steve, so Steve gets the win, he gets to steal anyone's star he wants. Obviously, I guess for this structure, would not Brad or Kara's if you want to steal uh, a women's uh, star, but he couldn't steal Brad. So if you wanted to steal, it would just be uh, Brandon or who was the other winner? Brandon Adam. Or Adam. So he could have stolen either of them, but he stole uh, Brad, uh, Brandon's this time. Adam gives us a little... I think they were doing a good job in the edit of being like, uh, I feel good about my relationship with Steve, so I don't think he's going to take my star. And then Steve mm-hmm. does win, and uh, he doesn't. Uh, but let's get to episode two. We open with Steve using a Theragun, uh, giving us the full narration, the full previously on. Uh, again, all-stars energy. Like, I love that they're going to have, you know, the winner from the elimination like is tina the default spoiler alert winner from this episode going to be doing a a previously on i think that's really fun yeah they even had like a fun like cutaway when it started the previously on like yeah they're mixing it up it's very lighthearted all stars which uh is what is needed sometimes coming off challenge proper oh one um one thought coming out of the first episode to me with all of this like energy from tj doing the crowd work in the beginning is like we've been saying it for a long time but it bears repeating here have TJ host the reunion. I don't care what he costs. Run that man his check. Like, this very much feels like a, a, a reunion. Mm-hmm. TJ's, like, giving his own personal opinions more and more in the in the, the seasons we've been seeing recently. Get this man at the reunion for all of yeah. the varieties. <laughs> I would say yes. Flavors. Yes, but not as, like, a solo artist. He needs to be in that chair of, like, the ex. NFL player or NBA player who has never watched the show before, but actually has watched the show before and is there. Like, let him. I know Maria Menounos, the bet showing the 39 reunion wasn't her best look. I don't want to write her off just yet. Or just have, like, it be Devin and uh, TJ, like Devin with a Y, not a, you know, challenge winner, Devin. Uh, like, Devin and TJ would be a fun dynamic, or Devon and TJ would be a fun dynamic to host the reunion. So that could be fun. Devin and TJ, Devon, that's fine. I'll, I'll co sign that. Um, and it also just like reactions. It's like interesting to me watching this is like, I love having cam there, but like every time I see cam Jay and Nicole, I'm a little bit like, Oh, like it, it feels a little bit out of place. Not necessarily because I don't want them on, but just because of, you know, where we yep. are. Um, but no, excited to come into episode two. We get an in-depth look at Ayana's like challenge reputation and life. And I'm like, Oh, I mm-hmm. thought Ayana was going to go out <laughs> this episode yeah. based on the beginning. I thought the same thing it was a big visibility spike. Uh, didn't pan out to have her go out, but it panned out of her being like one of her biggest episodes in her challenge career, probably of basically masterminding a quit, which is, is a wild move to be able to pull off. So 
uh, we get to see uh, a lot of Ayana this this episode. And then Tina gets emotional just about how good the season is, which is like extremely <laughs> relatable. I felt like I felt very seen by that moment. <laughs> I felt that way too halfway. And I'm like, why am I crying? What is going on? Great season. Um, so we talked a little bit about, you know, the Cam and Jazz conversation and Avery's uncertainty mm -hmm. and last, excuse me, sorry, talking out of order last episode, but, um, I did love Janelle directly addressing the audience in her confessional, like what, uh, what an interesting, um, evolution for the confessional genre to be like, I know you guys think she's entertaining, but living mm -hmm. with her is different. I, I like that. Yeah, confessionals have, you know, they've been around since the dawn of reality TV. So if people want to change up what's happening in there, give it a shot. All right, but let's get to the uh, throwback mission, bringing in the Winnebago. Yes, this is uh, Car 6 Star. No, just Car 6. Um, six teams in classic uh, challenge proper format. They had to do an uneven team. Uh, so six teams. All teams of four, one team of three. They are in a, a Winnebago that is launched up into the air from a crane. He gets dropped down, spinning around with uh, everyone's favorite DJ, T DJ TJ, uh, giving out some ad spots with some uh, numbers, some uh, names that correspond with stickers on suitcases. You have to correspond those with the numbers and figure out a math problem. No one loves math more than the challenge, so I had to toss that in there. And then solve a puzzle. Gotta do a seventh inning stretch. We've been ooh, out of for a while here. Okay. No, I love the challenge. I loved maybe just like the energy and the spirit of it. The throwback TJ on the radio, the like vibe of the car. Uh, you know, Rachel being like, This is so road rules. Our team is so road rules. We're gonna like show them that. Like, I wasn't even a road rules girly, but I just love that energy. I'm even like kind of okay with the equations because there was just like an enhanced like interest around it. It got a little old, uh, heat after heat, and as you already mentioned, like I could absolutely not defend an uneven team when you knew somebody was going to have been eliminated. Like it wasn't like somebody went out in injury. Like I just don't, why that team obviously lost. It was so necessary to have four people, such an advantage. The police are coming in my window for that for, for the makers of that decision. It it is wild. That's like the one thing the challenge never learns their lesson on with these uneven teams. Like the one time I think it was thirty nine when they had like all teams of two and the one team of three, and it was like fl they were like flabbergasted that the one team of three won every single heat of like a five stage daily. It's like yeah, no, shit. of course they're gonna win every. They have an extra person, and like even in this one, like it's not that much of a disadvantage to have one less person. But it's still a disadvantage. Like, you don't know that extra person could have been like the person that was, you know, the math ways that was like the puzzle solving ways that could have done the one extra layer to keep uh, the peach team out of it. So, I mean, forget yeah. that. Like, somebody needs to like more ears to like listen and pay attention. Yeah, anything. You could be on a suitcase. It wasn't like only one person could use a suitcase. Like, like it, it was a huge, whether or not they had the skill set, like, it was a huge disadvantage. It was. It was. All right, but let's uh let's talk about it. Yeah, I, the colors were insane. Um, I insane. do wish the t-shirt t-shirt budget would be increased. Like we we've been complaining about this for a while. I, I remember it was it All Stars one where they were like silver, bronze, gold, <laughs> yes. and like dark bronze. <laughs> it was like let's but get this some was, like fun colors. Because it, it right off the jump, they had blue, classic, classic color, and then to immediately be the next team to be light blue was it was like I don't know what we're doing. And then we have green. Orange, right? We're on a roll. And then peach and yellow, which are like off-brand oranges. So it's like, what? Like, it, where's a black? Where's a red? Where's black. A they were all wearing black. All they the, were wearing was black, besides the stripe. The the brown, the red, a purple, a pink. I mean, pink is kind of peach, but like all those colors. Give me some more primary colors in the mix. Here's the thing. I, I'm no color expert here, but if you have blue, orange, and yellow and white, you have all the other colors. So I think my they only had four paints theory <laughs> is correct. Um, no. So, uh, again, Kifla, really a highlight here. We get him celebrating with a split. Man drops to a split to celebrate uh, mm -hmm. while Ayana and him are dancing. Um, Jay does well. Derek does well. Uh, but with the Jay thing... <laughs> I got to Mitch watch Jay because mm, I'm already pre annoyed where he's like one <laughs> shot, one kill, like shouting. And it's just like, 
you're taking it too seriously. Like, I get it because he's coming in. There's so much on his shoulders. But, like, nobody's putting that on you. Like, have just, like, a, a, just a monicum of fun. The So does the challenge risk waiting to see if Jay makes a final? Or I feel like they have to do an eating thing early, like, in a daily to put him on the spot, right? Like, they can't, like, risk, like, being if oh, let's run it back. Obviously, they're going to have something in the final. But you have Jay and his moment is like, you're going to drink the drink. How is that not one of the first like four dailies is drinking something? When they asked um, Steve to come up and hand model, um, what was it? The stars? Was that the first challenge I asked him to do that? Mm -hmm. I I thought that that was going to be food already. Like, because he like pulled something out from under Mm -hmm. TJ, like revealed. And I was like, they're already going to be like bull testicles because he Jay talked about it. I think Leroy was like, how's your gag reflex? Like uh, um, one Mm. of the haters on the street and they couldn't get over the fact that Jay wasn't practicing. And do you agree? Like, should Jay have been practicing gross food eating? I mean, to Jay's point, it is true. You can't, you don't know what they're going to toss at. You can't fully practice specifically that. But I think you can practice eating some gross stuff. Like you can at least mimic what you had to drink. You can mimic other other foods. Like you could try to like spicy stuff. Like I don't know. There's there's places to go. I do think there's been a huge downgrade in like the actual grossness of the food. I feel like they tend to have actual food at like eat an onion comes to mind but Mm. no um like even like tj's special drink was like tuna and mayo and something else like blended on this last season of the challenge so i know people tell me you can learn how to chug beer or learn how to swallow pills two things i can't do but Mm. i guess he could be learning how to like just get things down quickly without like tasting it or throwing up i don't know also i feel like was he what was the rules about throwing up back then that was that was gonna be my question because like we always complain like usually the gross food is the toughest because you literally have to chew it and swallow but like with the liquid in recent seasons we've seen people just basically pour it over their head and it counts as drinking it like they get like five percent of it <laughs> down their throat and it's like it's fine the rest of it is like all over their shirt it's all over the place so the fact that it was like a, a drink that he got eliminated on it's like just just pour it down who cares where it goes um but I guess maybe they were more strict about it back then uh, and now it's just like. Maybe that's why they shifted more towards like food. Um, all right. So the winning group is is uh, the yellow team, mm-hmm. uh, just a, a cousin of orange, as you said. Nicole, Laurel, Tony, and Jay, an unlikely team to win with having Nicole and Laurel on there together on uh, a challenge that requires communication. The losing group, Adam, Tina, Steven, Derek, Janelle, Jasmine, and Ryan. Uh, but it's going to be a women's day. And this is also what infuriated me about the three teams the three person team is like now only three women are eligible right. for the elimination vote. That was the, that's what even made the Janelle thing even crazier because she volunteers to go in and like, there's the whole conspiracy that Ayana starts pushing that she wants Jasmine, but it's like, there's only two options. It's not like the entire house was up for grabs and she's like singling, even if she was doing it, which it didn't seem like she was, but even if she was like singling out Jasmine, it's like, would you rather go up against Jasmine or Tina? Like, no shit, you'd rather go up against Jasmine. So, like, what what is even in the discussion if she was trying to push Jasmine? Of course she would be trying to push Jasmine. It's up to the house to not do it. But, obviously, that's what you would want. Also, I if Janelle made one mistake, which is she's not to blame for what happened, but, like, the one mistake maybe that she makes is that she says, I don't care who, but, like, the house will probably save Tina. But, like, you don't need to say that. That's just true. Like, mm-hmm. especially with, like, Derek and Ryan not being able to vote. Because I think they were talking about being working with Jasmine early on. So, like, yeah, Rachel, Veronica, like, the, the people eligible to vote are probably going to vote to save Tina. Or she'll do enough, like, intimidation work. Um, I mean, I know they end up not. <laughs> Tina ends up getting voted in. But, like, I do feel like that maybe had something to do with the fact that, like, all of this, like went crazy i don't know maybe i'm just naive yeah I, don't, I also didn't think it was great that she was being so big about whose star you would steal i feel like if you are gonna steal let's say it's avery's let Kara know like do this and put help me push this vote you get me to go against jasmine your star is safe for the week like i don't know why you would want to keep that uh, a secret especially if you are going to steal someone like avery who doesn't have the swear on the house that you might be more worried about so go just 
be very transparent with it. Also, as we talked about, I just think it's a very bad move. Like, I, maybe she was going to go in anyway, but who cares if you get a star on week two? You have to keep the star for like at least seven, eight, nine eliminations. Like, this isn't like I think she was in the mindset of what it was with the Red Skulls, like to get it early and you're locked in. Like, these things are going to be passed around a lot. So it's, it didn't even make sense that she would be like, I want to go in. Yeah, especially when the other people, if you take Avery's star, that are, would be eligible are Kara and Rachel. So you're probably getting called down, uh, like, or you're gonna get, you're gonna get stolen because they're not gonna want them pissed at you. Yeah. Um, if anything, it's a good reason. Well, no, you don't want them pissed at you anyway. Um, yeah, it's a good point. I think I agree. At first, I thought it was a good move because, like, yeah, this is probably the best position for her to be in, where no matter who gets voted in, she feels confident against. Uh, potentially between Tina and Jasmine, but way too early. She definitely mm-hmm. would have been number one to get the star stolen, and it blows up in her face. And I agree with you. I think Ayana is the one who asked her like whose star she would take up front. Um, and it's like, why does Ayana even care? Really? Like again, right. I think she's kind of on a power trip that's undeserved. But like, you at least yeah, maybe you lose Avery's vote if you tell Kara you're going to take Avery's. But who cares about that one vote if you can secure Kara like campaigning for you or getting right. something out of you know making that deal? Yep, totally. Um, but but ultimately, like we're coming down on Janelle. Like Ayana really kind of comes at this from nowhere. They have like a history of not getting along, and she starts the rumor that Janelle's jockeying for Jasmine. I think to your point before, like. Who cares if she was jockeying for Jasmine? Is that such a big crime? Like, is that is no. that insane? You're up for an elimination. If anything, Jasmine should be jockeying for Janelle because at least if it's physical, like there, you know, maybe more of a chance of her beating Janelle. Mm-hmm. The one thing that was nice, as opposed to especially like one of the first seasons of All Stars, where people would declare something, I want to go in, I want to do this, and everyone would kind of like bow down to it and agree to it. It was very refreshing to see someone push something and it not go exactly how they want it. And the house was like, do we actually have to listen to what they want to do? And everyone's like, no, we can kind of do our own thing. Like that is very much anti what we've seen on some of like the challenge proper seasons of like everyone going with the herd. So it was very nice to have the house kind of push back on what one person kind of just wants to do for their own sake. And then them just play the game as if they wanted to do it. Oh, was that, was that Ryan who said that? Oh, Oh, Um, no, I I also loved, like, this was so crazy. Like they were having a night out, but it was a a very brightly lit room that looked like Mm -hmm. a cafeteria. Like they're going table to table, like to the tune of Lindsay Lohan's rumors expertly deployed. And like, it was the most bizarre night out scene. And then finally they're like, let's just all, um, walk two feet away from us and discuss it. I loved this confrontation. Again, I thought this was all in Janelle's side. I think I think you're exactly right that we're going to hear that like there was more to this because everybody seemed to be on Janelle's side when yeah. Brandon was vouching for her. Um, it, it was it was a bit strange. Um, but what did you think of Tina's approach with Avery? Uh, it's better to work with me than against me, Avery. Trust, trust and believe. Yeah, it was a little tough, especially when you're seeing her. I think both Rachel and Veronica were in the room too. So it was like a three on one type vibe. It wasn't like they were one-on-one sitting by the pool with a cocktail. And it was like, you know, it was like casual girl talk. This was like, you know, if you don't do this, it would hate, I would hate to have something happen to your dog and like something would go wrong. Like it was giving up those vibes. So uh, it wasn't the best. And, you know, as I think Veronica noted, like Tina's not usually the one for the soft touch with the social politicking game. So maybe Veronica probably should have been one to steer the conversation, even though it was like Tina's neck on the line. Um, uh, I think that's where you like, you know, use one of the other heads of the BFFs to to steer the conversation. And it didn't really work, but it, I mean, it seems like it's going to work in the regard of Avery being on the outs amongst maybe like more of the larger group. Yeah, it's frustrating later when when Tina will steal Avery Star and kind of make it like a revenge thing. And it's like, girl, like everyone voted for you and you were always going to take Avery Star. And Mm -hmm. I credit Avery for like thinking about her game and being like, well, 
I'd actually prefer you go in against Janelle because you're two strong people and whoever goes home is better for me. But do you say that to Janelle? I mean, do you say that to Tina? No, you don't. So mm -hmm. Avery, a little bit for me, is acting like, you know, Flora. Like she hasn't not played in the current era of the challenge. And she's yeah. acting a little bit like everything has changed so rapidly since 1998. Like, girl, you've been here recently. Yeah, yeah. She needs to, she's a little bit dear in the headlights. Uh, I do think it's very much like she has her few people, but like I think so many of these people, she's probably just never spoken like a single word to before. Um, so it is very much like a fish out of water. Um, so that's a little bit tough, but I do agree. She needs to like, and maybe this will be like the wake up call that she needs to like get her footing a little bit. Um, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world, honestly, for her to lose her star right now. That way there isn't a huge target on her. Completely. Again, it doesn't really matter to have a star come week two. As she notes when it was taken, there's a lot of game left. I'm sure she's going to have a chance um, to win it back. Obviously, other, she's got to be an elimination at some point, you would think. Um, so she's going to have a chance anyway to get it back. So I think looking back on it, this probably is going to be a good thing for for Avery's game. Um, yeah, no, agree. Um, one thing while Avery might be two steps behind Cam, two steps ahead. I love how she goes into the night love out. Like it. I'm going to try to influence Laura and Nicole to go in against each other. <laughs> it, incredible. Like what if Laurel, what if you and Nicole just like fought out your love and like an open forum and one of the strongest women potentially got sent home on week two. That would be fun. What if you guys just did that? Just incredible from Cam. The only thing I wish was I wish she like doubled down on it in the confessional. I know she kind of talked about wanting it to happen, but she more played it into like that would be fun to see them compete as opposed to like devious style of like, oh, this would be so good for our game if we knocked out one of them right here. I wish she kind of like really dived into the killer cam mindset, but it's okay. I think that's implied. And instead of having yeah. Janelle, Tina, and Jasmine to get uh, the two top women to go in of the of the week, but. Um, one thing that's not clear to me in the format, because uh, as we'll get to in the arena, TJ says, like, one of you will have the chance to go in and then ask Laurel first and then ask Nicole. Like, it wasn't actually clear to me if both of them would have been able to opt in and go against each other. It's a good question. Yeah, I don't know the order of operations, why Laurel was asked first. And if Laurel goes in, can Nicole, A, so, yeah, does Nicole still get the option and can she replace Laurel? And like take Laurel out from doing the elimination, or is Laurel now locked in? And if the Cole wants to do it, she has to replace the other person. So I, I think it would be very unlikely that I guess I, I'll take that back. Maybe there will be a scenario where two people want to go in uh, to try to get a skull. So it's possible. I mean, you'd have to assume down the stretch. Well, no, you can't assume anything with this game. Nope. Um, I, I do think the way these things usually go is like they probably will go in having decided amongst themselves, like it will be respected. Like if Laurel was, well, forget Laurel and Nicole, but let's say it was like Laurel and Cam. If Laurel was like, I kind of want this no matter what, or I want right. this if it's a puzzle and Cam's like, I want this if it's physical, like they'll probably have it worked out amongst themselves, but I'd like to see a dispute. I'm sure there's a mechanism to settle it, uh, which would be cool. That'd be great. Let's get to the noms. Um, I I did obviously while you were going slow through the nicknames, I was going slow and pausing and rewinding during Ayana's speech because I obviously had to transcribe it word for word in one of the most incredible nomination filibusters in challenge history. Yes. Unbelievable, unbelievable editing job where it first was building up with like <laughs> super like stressful and like monumental music. And then they really played into it with the like the zoom in on the clock ticking by, um, and then the Leroy of it all. So, but I don't know if you have any key quotes you wanted to rip off of uh, of her speech. I've been very clear with some of you. <laughs> These two women, I ride for them to the extent that I'm willing to go extinction. Extinction. Everybody dies. <laughs> Full stop. Oh, I don't even know what that means. I'll skip a little bit. This was great, though. Oh, actually, I won't skip because the next line is also great. Because my book, if you come to me asking for something, you better be willing to give me something. That's We heard her say that to Janelle. We heard her say that to Confessional. This ain't charity. Consider me the grocery store. You're going to eat good, but you're going to pay for it. Okay? If you're going to step into this field, you're going to poke the bear. You get a step on the mind. I like that because she like couldn't decide which analogies. Like I'm gonna give you all three. Everything. 
you better have your sights ready because I shoot straight. You better be straight. That's when Leroy interjects for the first time and says, who are you voting for? <laughs> Don't cut me off. Given what I've heard everybody say in this room, we all know where it stands. Dot, 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 trails off in the edit. When I say I ride for somebody, I mean it to the end. Tell a friend. That being said, like I said, dot, dot, dot. Then you hear her say, it's so ironic, which is incredible. I wish we heard what was ironic about this. Don't even guess what my vote is going to be. Then they cut to Leroy's expression, which is just like <laughs> similar to yours now. And then she says, possibly the most confusing thing uttered in, in the history of the world. I'm not going to say Tina's name. I'm not going to say Jasmine's name. It is my hope that we can convince either Laura or Nicole to go down there. And my vote is for Jasmine. <laughs> if we tried to do that at one of Jordan Kalish Mafia games as our vote, he would have like kicked us off the stream to do uh, one of those speeches. Instant and mute. one of those votes. Instant mute. <laughs> um, it would have been very interesting if it was anyone else but Leroy who tried to push back. I feel like that would have escalated to a much bigger thing, but because of Leroy's like disposition and, and how he's able to handle himself in these situations, he was m much more calm. But if that was like someone else, if that was like a, an Ayana equivalent <laughs> pushing back on Ayana, like it would have broken out to like world war three. So sorry, that, I read ahead <laughs> to the next line and I get so laughing. I'm like a tomato. When T Leroy says, I'm being serious, though, I thought you weren't going to say their name. And Ayana says, I didn't say you weren't being serious. Don't put words in my mouth, which is an unbelievable reaction to someone saying I'm serious. And then she says, in the interest of time, I'd like to reserve that for a private conversation. <laughs> That's amazing. And if you ask me one follow-up question to anything I say in this podcast, you're going to get, in the interest of time, and reserve that for a private conversation. I'm, I'm saving that for some work calls. In the interest of time, I'm, let's save that for a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, yeah, let's take it offline. We'll discuss offline. We'll take that yeah, offline. We'll, we'll circle back. Let's circle back. Um, and then she goes into, I'm reclaiming my time. It's not your time. You're disrespecting my time and Ace's time. Ace was definitely worried about his time being disrespected Very. for sure. Can't, can't take a dude's time like that. So this was incredible. We're not worthy of Ayana, this speech here, for no reason. But my real question is like, <sighs> I, I can't say what how I would react if somebody went on for 50 minutes saying nothing, but I was quite surprised that Leroy had this re level of reaction. Yeah, it, it, it is very counter to what Leroy has done in that. Like, he is very much not confrontational. Um, it is odd that he was the one to speak up. I feel like he first started saying things as, like, a joke of being, like, can you just say what you want to do? I think he was trying to be like joking. And then when she got, he got pushed back and he kind of was doubling down on it. He was like the voice. He felt like maybe he just felt like he was the voice of the house of like speaking more. And he just got caught in the situation of having me to be the one to be like, like, what are you even talking about right now? Uh, but I guess he kind of just tossed himself into that mix for himself. We get the great line where he's like, the cameraman was looking at me like someone's got to do I'm something like, about this. Oh, I um, wish they cut to the cameraman, though. They should have cut to the camera and be like, yeah, I was he like turns that. a selfie on himself. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, I just think, like, it it was it was great for TV and it was understandable. But, like, it's objectively in the game the wrong reaction to interrupt Ayana doing this. Like, ooh, my headphone fell out and you get to see it. Um like, who, where did he have to be? You know, like, I understand this is frustrating. You're sitting next to your wife. You're on television. You're getting paid to be there. Like, you're going to pick a fight with Ayana over this. I mean, I don't think it's going to blow up in his face. It seems like most of the house is not with Ayana. Um, but anyway, nominations, Janelle and Tina. Janelle and Tina. And we head to elimination with Janelle saying, peace out. I'm done with this. And Ayana, if she had a cigarette, she would have been sober, smoking the cigarette by the pool, enjoying her cocktail, being like, my work here is done. I mean, Cam puts it perfectly, I think, which is like, we respect you doing things for your mental health. But if somebody is getting on your nerves, again, barring additional information we don't have, we're playing a game, figure out how to send them home. And like someone like Ariana, Ayana is like, I'm mixing uh, TV shows. Somebody like Ayana is like, the whole house is getting sick of her. Like, I, I know we're only seeing that on TV, but it does, if it's obvious to Cam, it, it seems like it's obvious to people in the house. Mm -hmm. And if you're here to compete, 
you know, an elimination against Tina is like a fun way to compete. It's, you know, it's who know. I mean, it didn't seem like a very physical elimination based off what it was going to be, but you're here to like do these types of things. So go, go do it. Shove it in Ayana's face, knock out Tina, and then rally the troops to get her in voted, voted in the next girl's day. That's how you get your revenge. So again, that's why the whole thing is that it was very, uh, very odd how it all kind of went down. And then I didn't expect that we would get a little bit of a real confrontation between Nicole and Laurel. You know, the whole two episodes, they've been like circling each other. Nicole does like attempt to make kind of a poor apology to Laurel. Like, I know what I did. I'm sorry I made you feel that way. And Laurel, just with the rage of a thousand sons, more sympathetic I could not be, is like, admit to what you did. And Nicole is like, well, I've got to walk away. So again, really, I think that's going to be the story of the season between Nicole and Laurel. We're gonna we're gonna see a lot more. Yeah, it's gonna play out in many different ways. Yeah, I was I was also surprised we even got anything of it, especially like kind of shoehorned in at the end of the episode. Like I know they could easily like manipulate time if they wanted to, and they could have just included this next week or when it kind of felt more right. Like the fact that this led to nothing was a little bit odd just to t- kind of toss this in here. Cause obviously, like you said, this is gonna be such a big point of the season for as long as one or both of them are in it. So it did feel a little, a little weird that. We were just kind of getting to it without much payoff so quickly. Um, and like maybe it's like it shortened in because like, are we gonna see them both go into the elimination? Right. We don't. Um, it you know, shout out to the game, like the the designers of the challenge who designed a challenge that we fully saw the equipment built for and heard how it works, but did not get to see played because uh Nicole and Laurel both declined to go in against Tina, so she gets a star by default. I liked how this was handled. I like that they didn't mm-hmm. just like skip the week and that Tina gets the default win. Yeah, because I was going to say for this season that like winning the elimination matters. It's not just like we survive. Like there is the point of you steal a star. Um, and Tina gets, you know, the lucky win to steal a star. But it, there's a very easy cop out answer now for why someone wants to steal Tina's star. It's like, oh, you didn't really earn your star. So I'm going to take it. And if you want to like earn it back, you know, you get your chance. So it very much opens it up for Tina's to be kind of stolen. Um, and I, I, I would assume the same thing, uh, you know, for Steve's. Like, I would think once your star gets stolen, it's very easy for that star to be the one that's kind of passed around. So for like Kara and Brad, uh, the ones that the, the stars are haven't been stolen yet they might stay that way for a few weeks. Yeah. And you definitely don't want to be um, someone stealing a star, as we said, from Kara, Rachel, Brad, and Adam, people who can are most likely to be winning or go in and win. The best case scenario is to steal your star from someone who's going to be eliminated soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, although then I guess your star is the most vulnerable. They, the flip side is like you take Kara's star now you're sitting up there with Avery and Tina, like maybe the next person, if it's not Kara, is going to be more likely to take Avery's star. But right. we'll, we'll see as people game game the new format. I'm, I'm excited to be uh, strapped in, as you would say, I'm sat. Sat. Here we are. Sat. But I'm about to not be sat because I'm reaching my my physical limits here. I got to get up. <laughs> Ooh. It does feel like it's the most genuine set to look at the camera the whole time. But here we are through episode two. Uh, you can subscribe. Sorry, at my face is so stressful for you. Why don't you just quit like Janelle? <laughs> you can subscribe. Rob is website.com slash challenge feed. Also subscribe to the YouTube feed. Uh, Rob is a podcast, the YouTube channel. Uh, so you can catch our video most of the season. I don't want to say all. It's a lot of pressure to say all, so most. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Colin Bryan underscore. Follow me, follow us, I guess, at TikTok, uh, challenge wrap up. Is TikTok getting banned? What's to happen with that? I thought that was going to get banned. I feel like that fell through. So here we are. TikTok's still alive. Um, they can follow you. Uh, you can follow me here. You can check out New Girl Old Guy, where Kiva Winnaker and I talk about New Girl. Uh, Closing it on the end. We're digging into season six. New episode also dropping uh, soon. Uh, it will. Ha- it, it already dropped, I think. I don't know. I got to see when I auto-dropped it for. But it's in the can, much like All Stars 4. Um Check that out at anchor.fm slash new girl old guy. And also check out the Facebook group if you haven't joined yet. Oh, wait, Challenge. I forgot. I meant to talk about that in the beginning. Well, we'll do it's, it next so week. Good. It's, okay. it's so good. It's the best great. place on the internet. Best place on the internet. The Challenge Wrap Up Facebook group. Join it if you haven't done so already. What are you waiting for? Do that. Subscribe to the Rob's Podcast YouTube. 
subscribe to our shout podcast out to the, all the facebook Everybody. users uh listeners uh army who are just like making their own content chit chatting about always exciting to check in on there so appreciate you yes we will be back next week for episode three until then have a good one